All right, everyone, welcome back. We are set up and ready to go. We went ahead and sanded this uh, with a little bit of 320 on a DA. Uh, just to break the shine, it's kind of a laminate material that's on the, uh, the outside, what you're seeing that this blue color is, and this is actually just airbrushed of some sort just to give the highlight. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix that, we're gonna redo that. So uh, this is MDF for the base, and uh, like I said, laminate on the front. So we, 320 on a DA was enough to put a nice tooth on the laminate and uh, the MDF is, is gonna really wick up uh, this 4050. So we're gonna put probably three to four nice medium wet coats on with the, with the intent of really locking up this essentially end grain that we have here um, where all these reveal cuts are made on the MDF because we don't want, uh, when we get to that paint process, the application of paint, we don't want it to keep sucking it in like a sponge. So 4050 is gonna hopefully seal this all up nice and uh, we're gonna let this sit for probably about a day and uh, then we'll come back and start painting. But this is uh, the application of the 4050. All right, everyone, welcome back. Ready to spray. Uh, I went ahead and finished kind of knocking these edges down, like I said, and uh, I just blew everything off. And actually, that's one thing I wanted to touch on. Um, I opted not to really wipe this down with any kind of a wax and grease remover. If I were to do that, uh, you guys know I always recommend a solvent base once you're actually in the paint application process. So once you have anything, any of our paint down, you do not want to use a water-based pre-cleaner because you're going to essentially be wiping it with a solvent and then soften that water-based paint because it is a water-based cleaner. Um, because this is wood, and MDF especially, uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried that if there are any areas that I kind of broke through or if it's a little exposed, I don't want the wax and grease to suck into that wood, really wick into there, and then it's going to stay in the wood, and then I'm going to paint over it, and there's a chance that we could kind of trap that solvent in there. So because this has essentially been in the booth, it's clean, I was doing everything with gloves on, it's, it's really not dirty. It's just we're trying to get rid of the dust. So I just blew it off really well, and I actually have an older tack rag uh, that I keep for stuff like this where all I did was just really tack it off really well and, and at that point you should be fine. It shouldn't be so much contamination that you really got aggressive with the cleaner, especially when you're working with something like this where you have a substrate that could soak up any kind of a wax and grease remover. Uh, if you were to do that, if you absolutely had to, I would just recommend letting that sit for like a half an hour or so to really let any kind of those solvents evaporate so you're not just pushing them back into the substrate. So I'm gonna stop talking. This is all tacked off, ready to go. I got my daylight blue mixed up. This is my LPH 300. It's kind of a perfect little gun. It's a little bigger than the 80, but not as big as the 400. 10% uh, 4011 reducer in my daylight blue, and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna start spraying. All right, everyone, welcome back. I went ahead and actually did kind of a half coat. So that first coat that you saw me put on was more than enough to really get nice, even coverage. I just kind of went back and kissed a few spots that I just wanted to get. I didn't want to hammer any material on all these edges and start getting hangers everywhere. So I just kind of did like a coat and a half. So that's all totally dry. Again, really nice and slick and smooth. And I'm actually really happy with how this, uh, the end grain turned out. So it looks really good. So that was daylight blue. Now I'm going to go back. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of phthalo blue to darken up the body. And when doing this, I, I like working from lighter to darker. Obviously, it's easier. Uh, for what we're going to do on this, this is going to kind of lay the foundation, the groundwork for our effects colors, where I'm going to hit back with some iridescent or, or pearl bright blue and our iridescent pearl electric blue. It's going to look really cool. And then we're going to do some hot, uh, some hot spots with some highlight interference colors over the top of that. It's gonna look really, really cool. It's gonna be a real simple effect to do, uh, but it's gonna really give this thing a lot of character. So I'm going to go ahead. I have the same mixture. I got my phthalo blue, and this time I opted for my LPH80 just because I want a little more control. I'm just gonna kind of darken the, the center of this and down to the feet a little bit, but I can 
kind of zero this in. When I say zero it, I mean I close up my fan control and give it a little more of a round, like conical pattern instead of that big open fan. I have a lot more control. I'm just gonna go ahead and darken that up. And then we're gonna talk about doing a fade to, to mix the colors to have a nice kind of a seamless fade. That's gonna lay the groundwork for those iridescent colors. So it's gonna look really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spray a little bit of phthalo blue. All right, guys, welcome back. My dark color is all sprayed. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. It's got a nice kind of a transition there. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is just uh, sometimes working a little bit lower pressure, air pressure. Um, you want it high enough to atomize the paint, but not so much that you create dry spray. So the last thing you want to do is have really dry edges and have like a texture. Because for what we're going to do when we go back over this with the pearl colors or the, the effect colors, any of that texture is going to actually make that pearl and make that those iridescence and highlights look really grainy. So the last thing you want to do is start creating that, that texture that starts to grow. So uh, just be mindful of that. When, you, when you're doing those fades, you, you want to try to minimize that dry overspray. So really happy with how this looks. Uh, it's, it's nice and, and pretty smooth. Um, one thing I'm going to do is kind of soften this transition from the dark to light. And an easy way to do that is to actually mix the two colors that you want to fade in equal parts, one to one. So I have my daylight blue and I have my phthalo blue. So I mix the two of these one to one and I actually want to extend this color. I want to, I want to make it a little bit more transparent. And, and a, a common thing a lot of people do to create a transparent color is they pound it with reducer. And what you're doing is you're kind of washing out all the resin, all the gut of that paint. You're, so you're going to decrease adhesion and sprayability. It's going to really spray not ideal. <laughs> so what I did was I mixed these equal colors, uh, one to one, and then I added 4050 to that. You could use transparent base, that'll work too, but we're using 4050, we have it. We already used it on the, the ground coat of this, so I just used a little bit that I had left over, and I added that about two parts to one part overall, because these are opaque colors. I wanted to extend that color. Extend means, you know, thin out the, the opacity of that color, but now because I'm adding a, a 4050 or a transparent base, you still maintain the integrity of the paint. So now you can go ahead and reduce that 10, 15%, and you're still gonna have a paint that's gonna perform the way you want it, and not just so much reducer that it just turns to water. So I already have it in my gun. Same thing, LPH 80. This time I have it needled really, really tight. So it's basically just almost like an airbrush. And at low pressure, I'm just gonna kinda go in and, and just kinda ride this edge to kinda get a nice transition from there. And then what I might do is just come back at the last step with a little more daylight blue just to brighten up these edges that kinda got washed out a little bit. So I still want a, a bright blue on the edge. So this is what that looks like.
All right, welcome back. Uh, you saw that last clip. I went ahead and just hit some of the highlights back with the daylight blue. That was a daylight blue uh, straight up. So the 10% reduction that I had, I put it in my TH2. I switched to the TH2 and I actually used the round cap on this guy uh, because it is awesome for control. Uh, a little more so than the LPHJ. The LPHJ is great, but I wanted to get in a little bit tighter and really have a nice smooth gradation. So I uh, hit my edges with daylight blue, and now I have daylight blue, and I mixed a little bit of opaque white in the daylight blue, probably around 25%. Just to lighten it up, you can see it in here. It's a lot lighter than what I have on the edge. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of hit my hot spots, the highlights that were here before. If you remember, there was some on the tail, some on the top of the head, and we're just gonna kind of go in and randomly do what we want. And that's gonna be it for our ground coat. So all that base coat color work, these are all done with the opaques. These are solid colors. Uh, so we'll let that dry up and then we'll do the fun stuff with the effects colors. All right, everyone, welcome back. We uh, walked away for about a half an hour or so, let everything dry up. I'm really happy with how that looks. That's my ground coat, kind of my foundation for what we talked about next, which is a little more of the fun stuff. So, in my TH2, in my cup right now, I have our uh, pearl iridescent electric blue. Uh, so I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. I, I'm gonna just kind of fade a little bit of the blue over the, the inside body. I'm gonna let that kind of overspray out to the edge. And then I'll come back, I'm gonna darken up just a little bit with the same color, but the purple version of it. We have a, a pearl, iridescent purple. And then I'm going to hit the highlights with our iridescent pearl uh, bright blue. So it'll be the same thing. These are kind of color keyed colors uh, to those bases, but they're gonna just give a little bit of effect. I'm not looking to get coverage here. I'm just looking to add a little bit of that iridescent powder, that pearl powder, that effect powder to what I already have over existing on the colors. And then the, the very last portion of this, we're gonna come back and hit with our highlight colors, our highlight interference colors. Those work the best over everything. They are, they're very soft and uh, if you mix them with a the color or if you kind of go over the top of them, they kind of wash that effect out. It's, it's a pearl that's like, goes from nothing to that color cast. So it's kind of a really cool effect. So I'll just kind of like highlight the edges of this and that'll finish this project off. So this, is the first color, the electric purple, or electric blue, sorry. And the cool thing is I can actually kind of use this color to extend those color fades even more because I'm gonna have a little bit of transparency there and I can soften those transitions from the dark blue to the light blue that much further. So you're just constantly working that, that blend just to have a nice, smooth, soft transition. You can see what I'm doing. I, I'm Again, I'm using a round cap on the TH and I'm just kind of airbrushing this in, just kind of riding that center line of where my body would be, and just letting that soft fade to the outside. You can see over the tail where there's Little, little light, it's really not darkening it up, it's more just getting that effect, so really, really cool. Hi right, guys, the uh, electric blue is dry, and next is the bright blue. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna just go right on my edge here, kinda blend that all in together. Alright guys, my electric blue is all dry and I'm going to do the same thing now and just work my way to the outside with my bright blue.
All right, we are just about done with this. The very last thing that I wanted to do was take a little bit of our Cosmic Sparkle Silver and just hit these top highlighted areas that were whiter before, the ones that I want lighter, like the top of the tail, just the top of his claw and the top of his head. And then what I'm gonna do is let that dry up and then we'll hit it with a little bit of our highlight interference and we're gonna call this guy done for right now. Because we are still actually gonna letter the, uh, the back section with a name on the tail. So what we'll do is we're gonna let this really dry up and then we're gonna put a couple coats of 4050 just over that area to lock that down, make it nice and smooth so we can do a little freehand stencil on that. But this is our Cosmic Sparkle Silver. We are back and we are ready to do the last of the paint work uh, before the lettering, of course. But uh, this is my highlight blue. So we did, uh, I talked about highlight purple and highlight blue. We, thought, we talked about it and uh, because most of this is blue, we figured the blue would be a better idea than, than going with the purple. So uh, this is gonna kind of cancel each other out. So highlight blue, and you can see I switched to my smaller cup. A little goes a long way with this. If you over apply our highlight color, what'll happen is it'll start to, kind of cause a milky look or kind of a pastel -y effect because you, you, you want this to kind of go from the color that you want to see, in this case the blue, to nothing. So if you just over apply this, it'll just cause everything to be kind of pastel -y. So real light, wispy, all I want to do is just kind of ride the edge of all this and it's really going to kind of help blend some of these colors in again and it's kind of give that soft uh, highlight look. So this is it. All right, everyone, we are back and we are totally done spraying color. <laughs> uh, and it looks really cool. Here, I got a light. We'll show you guys really what's going on. A lot of bling, a very cool effect. It looks really good. But So what I'm gonna do is at this point now, we let this dry up for, for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. And uh, I'm going to just spray a little bit of 4050 here on the tail because this is where we're going to name, we're gonna letter this right here on both sides. So I just want a nice level, even surface for me to be able to cut my uh, vinyl mask on. So we're just gonna do a couple coats of 4050, walk away from that, let that dry overnight, and uh, we're gonna come back and cut some letters. So 4050. All right, guys, welcome back. We got our 4050 completely dry. It's been uh, about a solid hour. And again, we're in a booth, so we do have good air movement and ideal drying conditions. So uh, an hour is, is definitely kind of recommended with uh, right around 70 degrees and uh, lower humidity levels. Um, so what I'm doing now is actually just putting down a base layer of my uh, mask, a little bit of uh, the KTU gold mask, FPS gold mask. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just draw a transfer something that I drew right onto this and we'll just freehand cut this. So I went ahead and I just took a piece of paper and I just kind of roughly did a little design uh, for what his name is. Obviously his name is Hudson. <laughs> so we're going to do this little Kind of a negative stencil we'll, we'll draw it right on the mask and we'll weed it right out right on this piece and then we're just going to go back in we'll figure out a color that we're going to do we'll probably darken this up a little bit maybe a little bit of darker blue and black maybe we'll just shade you know shade it shadow it a little bit uh, but this is pretty much the the gist of what i did so rather than having to draw a bunch of times on this mask and then you kind of lose sight of what it is that you're doing if you have to if you change some things. It's a lot easier to do it on a piece of regular paper. This is just copy paper that I just went ahead, I laid over. This is my bottom, actually bottom edge of the copy paper. And that was my reference point. You could see I, I went ahead and I drew just the tail outline, the tail outline and the, ins the inside here. This is where the bank uh, sits. And then I was able to just do this multiple times to, to see what I liked for lettering, kind of a freehand kind of style. Uh, and then I just can make a photocopy of that when I'm all done. So I can make many copies of these. And then what I'm actually gonna do is use, to transfer this to the mask, some transfer paper. This is Sorol transfer paper. You can see you get them in all these different colors. This is graphite. So what I'll be able to do is put a piece of this underneath this and then just transfer 
my lines right onto this mask and we'll be good to go. So then I'll start cutting that out. And then I'm gonna have to do, we're gonna do the other side as well. So obviously because of the way that is, we can't just flip it. So I'll have to redraw the Hudson going from H to the N on this side and we'll do the same thing on the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this transferred over and uh, we'll get a shot of me doing that. You guys can see what I'm talking about and uh, we'll start cutting it out. All right, I went ahead and got my transfer paper taped in place, got everything all kind of situated where I want it to be. And I laid my name back over the top. You can see, again, kind of hitting my reference area so I know that I'm not too far off, too far high, too far low, and all that good stuff. So just kind of quickly taped it down in place. And like I said, I'm just gonna take, for this, it actually works better if you have something a little more substantial uh, in terms of a point. So I have a ballpoint pen I'm gonna use just so I can bear down nice and hard. Not super hard, but it, a little harder than you would with a pencil. You kind of, you have to be able to transfer that line onto the paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start the process of single line, just quickly tracing this out to where I want this to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this drawn out. And uh, when I'm done, we'll weed this out and we'll start cutting. So I'm gonna continue on tracing and we'll see you guys in a little bit.